The next logic gate we will be discussing is the AND gate. First we'll look at its symbol and operation. Next we'll look at its truth table and timing diagram. Then we'll look at its Boolean algebra use and finally an application. So let's start with the symbol and its function. A two input AND gate is shown here, but this gate can have any number of inputs greater than one. The number of possible input combinations depends on the number of inputs. If we let the number of inputs be the variable n, then the total number of possible input combinations is 2 to the n power. So our two input gate here has four possible input combinations, because 2 to the second power is 4. We're going to start at 0 and count up in binary to get all of the combinations. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. The AND gate functions by producing an output if, and only if, all of the inputs are high. If any of the inputs is low, there will be no output. That is, the output will be low. So our first gate has inputs of 0 and 0, so the output is 0. The second gate has inputs of 0 and 1, so it too has an output of 0. The third has inputs of 1 and 0, which is just a mirror of the previous gate, it has an output of 0. Lastly, the fourth gate has inputs of 1 and 1. This is the only gate here that will have an output of 1. Let's look at the truth table of a two input AND gate. The inputs are A and B. The output will be called X. Recall from our video on the inverter that input variables are typically given letters close to the beginning of the alphabet, while output variables are typically given letters close to the end of the alphabet. So under our inputs, we're going to count up in binary beginning with zero. So the first row is zero, zero. The second row is zero, one. The third row is one, zero. And the fourth row is one, one. These are the four possible combinations of inputs. Now we can determine the output for each of the given inputs. The first row has inputs of 0 and 0, so the output is 0. The next row is 0 and 1, so the output is 0. The third row is 1 and 0, so the output is 0. And the fourth row is 1 and 1, so the output is 1. So here's the truth table for the two input AND gate. Why don't you try and make a truth table for a 3 input AND gate? First, how many possible input combinations will there be? If you said 8, then you are correct. 2 to the third power is 8, where the exponent 3 is the number of inputs. This actually applies to any logic gate, I might add, not just the AND gate. Okay, so the rule for the AND gate is the output is high only when all inputs are high. The output is low when any of the gate's inputs are low. With this in mind, pause the video and try to make the truth table on your own. Okay, here is the correct truth table. I have given the inputs the variables A, B, and C to ensure all possible combinations are being represented. The first row starts with binary zero and counts up row by row to binary 7, or 111. The only output that is high in the whole truth table is the last combination of 111. If you tried this on your own, hopefully you got it right. Now let's move on to a timing diagram. Here we have the timing diagram of the AND gate. This is much the same as the truth table. At t equals 0, both inputs are low, and so the output is low. At t equals 1, input A is low, and B is high. At t equals 2, A is high, and B is low. And at t equals 3, both inputs A and B are high. You can see that the only place the output is high is at t equals 3. So let's take a look at a different timing diagram and find the output waveform for ourselves. So now we have two new inputs with six distinct times, t equals 0 through t equals 5. 
One way we can go about this is by making a truth table of each time's input values. Then, once the table has been filled out, we can draw our corresponding output waveform. And if you're feeling a bit brave, you can skip the truth table part and just make the corresponding higher low output level for each time segment. We'll do it using the truth table because it's good practice. The first thing we want to do is mark our input signal with ones and zeros at each time segment. These are our values for the truth table. Now we can fill out the table. The first row is to equal zero on the timing diagram. Row two is to equals one, and so on. So what are the output values? If you said rows one and five are high and everything else is low, then you are correct. This is the same as times t equals zero and t equals four. So let's draw the output waveform on our timing diagram. And that's all there is to it. Getting a jump start on unit four, we are now going to look at the AND gate as a Boolean expression. In Boolean algebra, the AND operation is Boolean multiplication. The multiplication dot is used to represent this operation, or you can simply write the input variables next to each other. Just like in regular algebra, xy means x times y. In Boolean algebra, however, instead of saying a times b, what we'll say is a and b. Boolean multiplication follows the same rules as binary multiplication, which we discussed in unit two. Link is in the description. So here are the four possible combinations of a two input AND gate given in terms of Boolean multiplication. Zero and zero is zero. Zero and one is zero. One and zero is zero. And one and one is one. Here is a three input AND gate with inputs A, B, and C. The output X is given as a Boolean expression of its inputs x equals a and b and c. Okay, so what are some ways the AND gate can be implemented? The textbook gives two good examples, and we'll go over just one here. The seatbelt alarm. We all know and love our seatbelt alarms, right? Well, these loving reminders that you're about to break the law and or risk your life is brought to you courtesy of the AND gate. This AND gate has three inputs. The first is connected to the ignition switch. The second is connected to the seat belt. And the third is connected to a 30 second timer between the ignition switch and the logic gate. An input of high corresponds to the ignition being on, the seat belt being unbuckled, and the timer running. Okay, so when the output is high, the alarm sounds. When the ignition is turned on, the timer begins to run for 30 seconds. These two inputs are now high. If the seat belt is unbuckled, all three are now high, and the alarm sounds. If the timer reaches 30 seconds, it turns off, and so does the alarm. If, during the 30 seconds, you buckle up, the alarm turns off as well. So that's going to bring a close to our look at the AND gate. As a bit of a supplement to these videos on logic gates, I'm going to cover the transistor logic used to create these gates in a single video once we've covered the basic logic gates. So I'll be showing you the circuits used to create an inverter, an AND gate, an OR gate, a NAND gate, a NOR gate, and an XOR gate. Next up is the OR gate. Until next time.